you how to submit routine markup requests. After logging in and while looking at the main menu, select Submit a Markup Request. This will take you to the iTIC User Information and Excavator Information sections. Be sure your name and contact info are in the iTIC User Information section. Confirm all excavator information, making any changes necessary. You will also need to select the best time you can be reached. When you are ready, click Next Step. This will take you to steps 1 and 2. First, step 1, on-site contact information. Enter the name and phone number of a person who will be on-site during the job, in case utility locators have any questions. If you will be the only person on-site, enter same in the alternate contact field. Step 2 is excavation information. For type of work, enter the purpose of the excavation. You can use the keyword auto search function here. For instance, entering a word like install will generate a list of potential matches. In the next field, Working for Company, enter the name of the company, person, or organization you will be doing the work for. The next six questions refer to your method of excavation. Select Y or Yes for any that apply, and N or No for any that do not. You will need to select Yes for at least one of these six questions. If you have already outlined your excavation area in white paint, select Y or Yes for Is the job white line? Otherwise, select N for No. For duration, enter the amount of time you expect the excavation to take. Use the drop down menu to select between hours, days, weeks, and months. When you are finished, click Next Step. Step 3 is location information. In this section, you will describe the area where the work will take place. Using the drop-down menus, select the county and city or township where you will be excavating. In the address field, enter the number of the address where the work will take place. If there is no address for the job site, or if there are multiple addresses involved, enter zero in this field. In the Dig Street field, enter the name of the road where the work will take place on. You can use the keyword auto search function here as well. In the nearest intersection field, enter the name of the street that intersects the Dig Street closest to where the work will take place. Please note that this will not necessarily be a major intersection. In the marking instructions field, describe the physical area where the work will take place. Be as detailed as possible. It is extremely important that you describe the entire work area, and not just where you believe the lines may be located. The next two fields are for GPS latitude and longitude information. Currently, Iowa One Call supports NAD83 format for GPS. If you have this information, enter it in the respective fields. Be sure to include a minus sign before the numbers in the longitude field. GPS information is not required. If you have township section information, enter the section number in the section field, and select a quarter using the checkboxes. If you are working outside the city, you must provide section quarter information. Step 4 is the Map It section. In this section, you will need to select an area on the map that will encompass your entire worksite. The iTIC computer thinks it has found a match for the address that I have entered. This potential match is represented by a place mark near the center of the screen. There are several tools in the Map It section that can help ensure you are mapping in the correct area. Selecting the Identify tool will allow you to click on certain map features to find out more information about them. 
This information will be displayed at the bottom of the map section after the word Highlight. Once you have found your worksite, you will need to select an area on the map that will completely encompass your excavation. You will do this by selecting a computer-generated polygon or by drawing your own. If the Change Shape button is available, you can use it to cycle through a list of computer-generated polygons. The Change Size button can be used to expand or contract the computer-generated polygons. You may also hand-draw your polygons. First, click the Clear button, located in the lower right corner of the map. This will remove the computer-generated polygon. Then select the Draw tool, also located in the lower right corner of the map. Then draw your polygon by clicking on the map where you would like to begin. Continue to draw until your entire work area has been encompassed. To close out the polygon, simply click on the same point that you began. You may also cycle through different map views to make sure you have mapped in the correct area. You will need to have the OCC map selected in order to approve your polygon. Once you are sure your entire worksite has been encompassed, move to step 5, Start Date Information. The start date and time will automatically default to the earliest available time, based on when you are filing your markup request. If you plan to begin your work at a later date and time, you can adjust the start date and time by using the drop-down menus and the calendar buttons. Keep in mind though that if you select a later date and or time, you are agreeing to postpone your work until that point. When you are finished, click Next Step. You will then be presented with a list of utilities that will be notified as a result of your ticket. This list is determined solely by where you map the area in the Map It section. If you are missing a particular utility, it may be wise to go back and adjust the mapping. Remember that it is your responsibility to notify any private facility owners directly. When you are certain your ticket is correct, click Next Step. Your ticket will be released directly to the utility companies. You will be presented with a ticket number. Be sure to write the ticket number down. You may now start a new ticket, view the ticket you have just filed, or you may return to the main menu by clicking Finished.